Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the permanent maxillary second molar. So, what we are going to discuss in this session? In this session, we are going to discuss the chronology or the timeline of development of the maxillary second permanent molar. We are going to discuss the number of this tooth and various numbering systems. And we will discuss the landmarks that are present on the maxillary permanent second molar. So watch this video till the end. So the timeline of development of this tooth. So the maxillary second molar, the calcification of this tooth, it begins at the age of two and a half years. The enamel is completed by the age of seven to eight years and this tooth it emerged into the oral cavity by the age of 12 to 13 years and if you add plus two then the completion of root is about the age of 14 to 16 years because when the tooth it emerge into the oral cavity only two-thirds of its root is formed the remaining root it is formed after two years around two to three years. Now, what is the number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems? So, this is the second molar. So, in the universal numbering system, the number of this tooth, it is two for the right maxillary second molar. While for the left maxillary second molar, so this is a left maxillary second molar, the number of this tooth, it is 15. The number, it begins with the third molar with 1, and then in a clockwise direction, the number, it numbering, it continues. Now, in the Palmer notation system, the number begins from the midline. From the midline till the second molar, and the number of the tooth, it is uh, seven for the right maxillary quadrant and this is the symbol that indicate that this is a maxillary quadrant of the right side and this is the number of the tooth similarly for the left second molar left maxillary second molar the number is seven and here this symbol it indicate that this is the maxillary tooth of the left side and this is the number of the tooth now in the FDI notation system, so this is the maxillary second molar of the right side. So the number is 17. Here the 1, it indicates that it is the right upper quadrant. It is a right quadrant. While the 7, it indicates that this is the maxillary second molar. Similarly on the left side, this is the maxillary second molar of the left side. Here, to it indicates that it is the left quadrant, left maxillary quadrant, and seven it indicates that this is the second molar. So the number is two is pronounced as two seven. Now, some basic points uh, that are identification features that are related to uh, the maxillary second permanent molar is a fifth cusp or the cusp of carabelli is not present, unlike the maxillary first molar. As you can see now on the screen, the first picture, this picture is of maxillary first molar. You can see a fifth cusp on the lingual side. Whereas in the second molar, there is no fifth cusp and the lingual surface is smooth. Now, the roots of the maxillary second molar, they are less divergent. So the roots, they are close to each other, unlike the maxillary first molar, in which the roots are more divergent. So the distal cusp, they are less developed. So the distal cusp, they are smaller. So the overall, the crown is smaller in overall dimensions. If you compare this tooth from the maxillary for a smaller. 
So overall, the size of the crown is smaller. Now, from the buccal aspect. So from if you look at the maxillary second molar from the buccal aspect, then the overall, the crown is shorter, cervical occlusally. So this is the cervical portion near the cervical line. So cervical occlusally, this is the occlusal portion. So cervical occlusally and mesiodistally, the crown is shorter and narrower if you compare it with the first molar. This cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp. And this is the distobuccal cusp. So the distobuccal cusp, it is smaller. So because the distobuccal cusp, which is smaller, therefore the part of the distal surface is sometimes visible from the buccal aspect. So this is smaller as already this we have already discussed. So these are the two buccal roots. This is the root trunk. And the, after the root trunk, there are two roots. So the buccal roots, they are of the same length. And there are two roots, two buccal roots. So this root, it is known as the mesiobuccal root because it is close to the, uh, to the mesial side. And this root is the distobuccal root. And both of these roots, they are roots, they are of the same length. These roots, they are close to each other. In fact, all three, three roots, they are close to each other and they have a distal inclination. They have a distal inclination. So the distolingual cusp, it is the smaller cusp. So this smaller cusp is the, this is the distal side and this cusp is the distolingual cusp. And this distolingual cusp is, in fact, it is smaller than the distobuccal cusp. Therefore, the distobuccal cusp, it is visible from the lingual aspect. This is the mesiolingual cusp. So, the mesiolingual cusp from the lingual side, it is smooth. So, there is no evidence of presence of fifth cusp over here or the cusp of caribali. A cusp was present on the maxillary first molar at this location. So this is the lingual root, sometimes also referred as the palatal root. So this root, the apex or the tip of this root is in line, nearly in line with the, with the tip of the distolingual cusp. So with the tip of this cusp, it is nearly, approximately, nearly in line. So this is the overall morphology of the maxillary second molar from the lingual aspect. Now from the mesial aspect. So the buccolingual width, this is the buccal side. And this is the lingual side. So the buccolingual width, it is same as that of the maxillary first molar. So this is the root divergence. So the root divergence from the mesial aspect, it is also less if you compare it with the first molar. Now this is the cervical line. So cervical line, it has a little convexity towards the marginal wedge. So it is a little convex. Now from the distal aspect, the distobuccal cusp, so this is the buccal side and this is the lingual aspect. So the distobuccal cusp, it is a smaller as compared to the mesiobuccal cusp. And the marginal wedge, it is also present at slightly at a lower level. So because the marginal wedge and the cusp, it is short. Therefore, the part of the occlusal surface, it is visible from the distal aspect. Like other anterior teeth and the posterior teeth, the cervical line, it is 
nearly straight on the distal aspect. Now from the occlusal aspect, from the occlusal aspect, the buccolingual diameter of the crown, it is same. So this is the buccal side and this is the lingual side. So the buccolingual dimensions of the crown, it is same as the first molar. While from the mesiodistal, this is the mesial side, so, and the mesiodistal dimension, it is one millimeter less as compared to the first molar. So there are four cusps on the maxillary second molar. In the first molar, there are four main, main, main cusp and a one smaller cusp. So this cusp is the is the mesiobuccal cusp. And this cusp is the mesiolingual cusp. So the mesiobuccal and the mesiolingual cusp, they are very well developed. Well, this is the distobuccal cusp. And this cusp is the distolingual cusp. So these two cusps, they are smaller as compared to the mesiobuccal and the mesiolingual cusp. Now, on the maxillary second molar, there are more supplemental grooves. More supplemental grooves. These smaller grooves, they are known as the supplemental grooves. So these grooves, they are more as compared to the first molar. In addition to that, the number of pits, they are also, they are more in number as compared to the first molar. So this is the rhomboidal outline. So this is the rhomboidal outline. So in this type of first molar, the outline, it is rhomboidal. So this is the first type. In the second type, the distolingual cusp, this is the distolingual cusp, either it is poorly developed or this cusp, it is entirely missing. So the crown, it, it, it is heart shape. So this is a second type of the occlusal surface in a maxillary second molar. So you can find two type occlusal type. One is the rhomboidal outline type like this and another type is the heart shape form. So thank you very much for watching this uh, short video lecture. I hope you like this video. Please give us your feedback in the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Thank you very much and stay blessed.